Hey, what's up? My name's Sam. I thought I'd just give you a little review of my Polaris Sportsman 450HO. It's a brand new model, 2018. I've had it for like a week or two. So, it seems to be a pretty good little machine. <clears throat> when I was thinking about buying this, I was debating between the Kimco MXU 450i this machine and the Can-Am Outlander 450. Kind of a hard decision. They're all pretty nice machines. The Can-Am was actually a really nice machine. And I was actually pretty impressed with the Kimco. So, But I ended up going with this Polaris. So far it's been pretty fun. I have only got... No, I think there's like 25 miles on it, so we haven't ridden too far on it yet, but... <laughs> the things I really like about it is it's got a nice, comfortable seat. Like, that's really comfortable. And the suspension's not too bad. It's a little bit stiff. I did let a couple pounds air out of the tires, and that helped the ride quite a bit. I think I... I think they were about at eight when I got it from the dealer and I lowered them down to about six. For 2018, they've got a brand new display on here, which is a lot, I like a lot better than the 2017 models. It's got pretty good readout here if you can see it. We'll see how many, I've got 28 miles on it, 28.3 on it right now, so. I do really like this readout. It's got everything you need on it. It's got the time and you can scroll through here and you have two trip meters and voltage. Your, I'm not sure what that one is. We'll have to read the manual again. Then it's got your service hours, engine temperature, and then your RPMs. So it's nice. You can watch your sp speed and your RPMs on there. It's got a nice big trunk up in the front here. The, the front rack's kind of useless. I don't think you could really haul anything on there. But it does have a nice big... If I can get it open. A nice big trunk in here. It seems to be fairly watertight. I've had it... Last Saturday we took it out and rode it in a pretty good snowstorm and it got it muddy and snowy, but everything in here stayed pretty dry. It is kind of funny shaped in here, so it's a little bit hard to put bigger hard items in there, but soft items like jackets or coats or gloves or anything fit really well. It does have a nice big trunk on the back here. I'm surprised how big that is. It's really deep. And it's got a nice watertight gasket on it too. So why did I pick this over the Kimco or the Can-Am? Oh, probably the biggest reason is the dealer, Cox's Auto Odiv in Fairview, gave me a pretty good price on it. So you know, I got it for right about the MSRP out the door, which is. The MSRP is about $6,000. The Kimco MXU is a really nice machine. Its MSRP is, I believe, $4,999, so just about $5,000. But when I went to the dealer, they only had one in stock that they'd already sold. It looked like a nice machine. And Cox's service was a lot better. So. I did really like the Can-Am 450. It looked like a really nice machine. But they only had the one DPS model in stock. And it ran $800 more, I believe. And they could order me in what I wanted without the DPS. But it would have been... I They didn't give me quite as good a deal as this Polaris, so... Let's see, the things I don't like about it is I, I'll try to show you here if you can see it. The battery, if you can see the battery right down in there, just sits right on the bottom of the frame down there. 
a little bit nervous about that going through the mud and deep water and stuff. I don't know how that will hold up, but I assume Polaris has made enough of these that they know what they're doing. Um, the other things I don't particularly like about it is, oh, I really hate the, just having the single brake lever on here. Like it, single brake lever actuates all the front and rear brake, and it works well enough, like it's well proportioned, so it doesn't throw you over the handlebars or anything. But what I've found is when I'm just riding around the property or like backing up to do it, hook onto a trailer or something, I'll be riding with just one hand and I don't have a brake over here to stop it with. So that might just be me, I might just have to get used to that, but I really prefer having two brakes instead of just a single handlebar mounted brake. It does have a foot brake down here that just actuates the rear brake. And for me, I don't know if you can see that. I don't particularly like the location of it. I think it could be an inch or two farther forward, but it's not bad and it does work pretty good. So maybe I'll just have to get used to using that. Um, anything else about it? Oh, it does have a one and a quarter inch receiver hitch on the back here which is okay. I would prefer to have a two inch receiver hitch on it. The Kimco had a two inch receiver hitch, which is nice, which would be kind of handy because I already have all the hitches for that, but it's not a big deal. I can get hitches for this. And the Can-Am actually just had a, a, just a plate for a ball mount. It didn't have a receiver hitch on it at all. It does have a nice sway bar on the back, which keeps the back pretty even when you're going around corners. Overall, it's a pretty good machine so far. Like I've said, I haven't really ridden it too much and I've been trying to take it easy on it because it's got a 25 hour break-in period. So I've been trying to <laughs> keep it half throttle, half three quarter throttle for the break-in period anyway. I have had it around one kind of a short course, add some banks and whoops and a couple jumps. And I was surprised for as big as and heavy a machine it is, I think it's a 700 pound dry weight, so right around 700 pounds. It actually handled the short course pr fairly well. It's like it's no sports ATV, but I was surprised how well it did. And as far as the 450, it's actually, it says on the back here, like I don't know if you can see it right there, but it says it's 500 cc and in the Polaris brochure it does say it's a 500 cc a few places online I have read that it's the same engine is a 570 it's just tuned down but I'm not sure on that I couldn't verify that but it's doesn't it's not like a complete powerhouse but so far it's had plenty of power for me it's been an excellent trail machine is what we really bought it for and you know, it's been fun so we'll see it only has 24 inch tall tires on it I do wish it had a little bigger like 25 or maybe even 26 but we can maybe change that down the road anyway just thought I'd give you a quick review of this and tell you what I like and don't like about it and if you're looking to buy one, maybe this will help you out. Anyway, well, thanks for watching. Maybe I'll, when I get some more hours on it, I'll give you an update on it and see, tell you how I like it then. So, anyway, well, thanks, and we'll talk to you later. Bye.